that can bring you value. And so I really, really encourage you guys to uh, raise your hand and ask a question. Tom Fox, I... Uh... Is that your real name? It's my real name. That's a sick name. Tom Fox? Clap it up! That was super fun. You're at a, you're at a high advantage because you're you can do you can play instruments and you have experience in these different things like doing the Vox stuff and like if you're if you're able to like make a beat like that then you really can do anything. You know you can make complex stuff, simple down the middle stuff that's more um, tailored for like rappers or like some top line singing. You also write and sing. I really want to work with Tyler, the creator. I know it's gonna happen. Yeah, totally. Wheeled, wheeled it into existence, you know? One thing also too is doing stuff that takes you outside of the box. I think maybe start to collaborate with some people and, you know, open up a little bit, work with some different artists. Do you find that like a worthy um, time like to invest in like making a sample pack when <coughs> maybe I could be making music or reaching out to people? I think you can do it all. You know, if you make a sample pack, that's making music. <laughs> you know what I mean? Make stuff that you would use. You know, you can double up. Do Ultimately, you want to just do what excites you. If sample packs don't excite you as much as like singing or like making an upbeat tape or instrumental album, then like do the thing that excites you. I mean, that's always worked for me. I've seen people kind of function in that way and it like, works pretty well. The easiest and most fun way to like learn how to do something is to just like be around other people. You know, like collaborating with people, dude, is like such an amazing thing. So like start collaborating with like maybe other producers as well. Like go maybe play some guitar, have them try like on a click track. Maybe you can program some bass, you know what I mean? Like kind of get into that mode a little bit. That's great, yeah. Just mesh the two worlds together. Yeah, that's sick. You really want to be specific and intentional so it's so think to yourself okay i'm making x amount of dollars per month at my job currently how can i make the same amount of money if not more doing beats or do, doing music right from the sound of it those two things from in my mind are leasing beats and selling sample packs in the next couple weeks or maybe a couple months building sample packs like we were talking about earlier, um, you know, I, we kind of spoke about the formatting of that earlier today. Um, and then, you know, create a catalog of beats that you can throw up on BeatStars, YouTube, Airbit, and then Instagram DM. And, you know, $4,000 per month on, um, in, in my job, how can I make $4,000 per month with music? So if I release a $30 sample pack every month and I sell 30 of them that's 30 times 30 so that's uh, 900 dollars uh you know if i do a 50 dollars non-exclusive lease and i release 20 beats per month and i can lease each one of those beats twice that's um you know what is that two thousand dollars or something like that that that's kind of the, the process yeah. and the thinking you know so it's really being intentional about generating income that could allow for you to you know quit your job or at least cut your hours or whatever yeah. the case may be. I think that's a big goal. The sample packs thing I've thought of but for some reason my mind was first like I'm gonna release these for free to like gain some traction mm -hmm. rather than just charging out of You definitely thing. don't. You definitely don't want to do that because if you release if you get people into the habit of like knowing you're releasing stuff for free mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you charge them money you, they're not gonna pay you. But to go back to what you're saying in terms of like the imposter syndrome thing, you know, that, that's that's really like a deep mindset thing. Do everything in your power to not pay attention to um, to other people. You know, block the noise out. And we get a lot of that on social media. How many hours per day are we swiping through our timelines, looking at other people's lives, which by the way are cleaned up sort of fake highlights. version highlights of other people's lives. You know, so, so, you know, social media can be very, very toxic if you're not using it the right way. So the way that I combat that and what I suggest to you guys is follow accounts that inspire you, you know, unfollow accounts 
that don't bring you joy. So like if you're following uh, CNN, none of you guys follow CNN, but if you guys are following like CNN.com for your daily news, I suggest you don't. But basically accounts that often you look at their shit and they either make you feel depressed or jealous or envious. Unfollow those accounts or at least block them, you know? Follow accounts that inspire you. Follow stuff that entertain, like funny stuff, like fuck Jerry. You know, I love following fuck Jerry. Like just, just customize your timeline in such a way where if you are gonna check Instagram, you know that you'll either be inspired or empowered or just feel better about your day. And that's so, 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 so crucial, especially if you're a creator. I think once you make these small adjustments, you can start to head into the right direction. Because, you know, if you're not intentional about reaching this goal of eventually doing music full time, you're just gonna continue to stay at the day job and another year is gonna go by and you're gonna be in the same place. Yeah. You know? Exclusive. <laughs> I want that exclusive license right now. Placement beats, right? A lot on my social media, I talk a lot about if working with artists uh, is your goal, then you want to create a, a bed of music that isn't overly complicated and being mindful of creating music that an artist could write to. Let's jump right into this. So let's see where we're at here. So. We're right here. Oh. Um, hey, bring it out. We just want to say congratulations on the Grammy. Hey. Thank you so much. Hold on. Let me turn my mic on. Mic's working? Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. Sorry about that. First of all, um, this this like this is so. I have no words for how amazing this is. Um, this really means a lot, man. Like I'm I'm at a loss for words. Thank you so much, man. Um, you see this? So it says. Thank you. So it says, uh, congratulations, Black God, pass the ox. Like I don't want to eat this. Like I wanna I wanna like conserve it and like laminate it and like hang it up in my room. Wow. Man, I'm holding back tears right now. Yeah, I'll let it out later. You gave them some serious pictures to use. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat my face. This is definitely not how you cut a cake, but <laughs> we're just, we're figuring it out. Be like, I want the fucking Grammy, all that shit. I suck at doing that, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna play myself. I want another slice. <laughs> don't, don't judge me. Keep in touch, Thank guys. You. Yeah, yeah man. man.